How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want to chance one of your questions being answered, make sure you drop a comment down below and I'll either answer that question in a comment or in a future video just like this one or make a dedicated video for that question if need be. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the week. And it is, how do you know if a potentially uh, the car has been misdiagnosed or not? This happens sometimes where there is a series of events where multiple parts do need to be replaced. So um, that's pretty hard to answer, although uh, there's a lot of misconception of, uh, you know, we plug in the computer, whatever brand it, it may be. For Honda, it's HDS. That's a software that we use. And uh, we look at the code and the code magically tells us what to do. A lot of times the code just gives a direction. So with that code, we go either east, west, north, south, whatever the case may be and start looking in that area. I will say when you have a issue, whether it be a check engine light, a trans light, a drivability concern, a vibration, a noise, whatever the case may be, try to have as much detail as possible so that we could uh, use that information to help us uh, you know, diagnose your concern. You, you know, for example, if it's a check engine light, if it came on, if it stayed on, don't clear the light because obviously we need that code and sometimes that code has valuable information in there that helps us troubleshoot that code. So a lot of the times when we get a code, uh, we'll follow the trouble tree and it'll lead us to a point where it will say, uh, swap with known good part. Now that's great if it's a 2020 pilot and there's probably a chance of one being in a lot or coming in. And now sometimes we do borrow parts from a different vehicle just to confirm that before we recommend it, go ahead and uh, you know make you use the money, uh, spend your money, or if it's warranty, uh, if we bill out a couple parts to, uh, in a warranty ticket, that also throws up a red flag. So, um, you know, but it'll say swap out this part and proceed from there. You know, if it fixes the issue, great. We order a new one. If it doesn't fix the issue, then obviously we continue with the troubleshooting tree. Now, this could get tricky uh, if a car does have multiple concerns or if you ignore the check engine light for, uh, you know, a while. So if a check engine light was on for two or three years and an issue is just one issue, now you have two or three different issues. Doesn't mean that you you know, the vehicle was misdiagnosed. It's just possible that you do have a couple of issues going on that require a couple of different parts to fix that issue. Now, if the car is like a 96 Accord and we don't have any of these parts to, you know, try from a known good vehicle, then at that point, this is gonna be our first step in order to proceed with repair if needed. Now, obviously, uh, there's ways to check sometimes these parts multiple different ways. So uh, between that and then past knowledge, past experiences and stuff, uh, you know, in addition with uh, what we see in front of us, so the, the condition of the vehicle, you know, if the, the wiring has been boogered up or anything like that, then obviously we take that into consideration. So a lot of variables come into play here. It's not just a clear cut uh, repair a lot of times. Um, sometimes it can be, but a lot of times it's not. And that's kind of where the miscommunication between the technician, the service advisor, and the customer ultimately uh, fail. So uh, at my job, we use the uh, video multi-point inspection. So uh, first, uh, first things first, I'll address uh, the concern that the customer came in first, and I'll tell them myself uh, how I found the issue and how I want to proceed. And if possible, there may be a chance that we could run into more than one component being replaced, especially if the car has been in some sort of a wreck or if it's salvaged title, has been flooded or anything like that. So it's, a, again, a hard question to uh, answer. So obviously, if a technician re uh, recommended an engine and all needed was a starter, then obviously that is an issue. And you should probably find yourself a new repair facility, whether it be a dealer or an independent shop or whatever the case may be. Um, but... You know, something that obvious, it's, you know, uh, obviously it was misdiagnosed. But a lot of times there is multiple steps that we have to do. And, you know, people uh, kind of judge us on that a lot of times. But when you go to a doctor with concern, sometimes they have to run eight, nine, ten different tests on you before they even have an answer. Sometimes they still don't have an answer for you. So um, swapping out some of these parts sometimes is part of that process, unfortunately. Uh, so if uh, we are lucky, we have something in a shop that we could uh, use. Uh, sometimes we save old parts that had uh, a concern, like for example, a window switch, driver's side window wasn't working with that switch, but all the other three windows work. So that's very easy to swap out and confirm if the right front window was a concern. This repair that I could check in real quick and like that, 
uh, you know, it's very easy to pinpoint in that fashion. So uh, sometimes a stuck window switch could also burn out the, the window motor. So again, it does get kind of tricky, but um, communication is key in my opinion. And I love the video idea uh, for that because I could tell the customer what I want to tell them because there is a lot of broken communication between the technician, the advisor, and then the advisor telling that information to the customer. And I think that's where a lot of these issues arise. So hopefully that answers the question for you. All right, going on a long trip, what should you do before uh, going on that trip? So this question was for a 2.0T Accord, although this will you know, pretty much apply to any car, not just Honda, any brand. Um, so obviously do your checks. Is there any noises? Is the vehicle pulling? Is, uh, you know, is there a check engine light? Obviously, if any of those are happening, you should get those checked out. Now, if your car doesn't have any issues and it hasn't been in the shop within six months to a year, I would highly recommend taking it to your trusted mechanic and having them look over it, voice your concerns. Hey, I'm going to Florida, I'm going to Cali, I'm going to Colorado, whatever the case may be. I'm traveling up to Jersey or New York uh, and I wanna make sure everything's okay. Uh, at that point, they should be checking, obviously your tires, tire pressure, any uh, belts, hoses, uh, filter stuff like that, the obvious stuff, your suspension, um, checking for any oil leaks or anything like that. Now, if you're doing this out of your driveway and your car's fairly new, then obviously check your tires, check you know for any leaks or anything like that, any noises, uh, make sure you check your spare tire. If your vehicle doesn't have a spare tire, then uh, sometimes it'll have a pump. Make sure that pump is working. You don't want to get caught out in the road with nothing, especially if you're traveling at night. Um, you know, probably, uh, uh, you know, just make sure that is good so you don't have any headaches. Uh, a jump box is always a great idea. Get your battery tested for sure. Uh, you know, these heat, the heat in a cold is uh, takes a toll on these batteries. So if it's more than three years old, personally in my cars, I replace them. Not on my TLX, I have a lithium battery, so I'm not worried about that one. But on my Pilot, uh, right around the three-year mark, I heard it crank slow once. I always test it when I bring it into the shop. So I said, all right, that's it. Because the last thing I need is for the wife to be stuck out on the road with the kids, and it just turns into a big mess. And usually happens at the worst uh, possible time. So um, just some of those things, make sure your wipers are good, uh, you know, and stuff like that. Just do your basic checks, do your, you know, your overall uh, checks of the vehicle, make sure everything's running nice and good uh, and as smoothly as possible. You know, again, a jump box is not a bad idea or some jumper cables, throw those in the back in a trunk somewhere and just maybe a basic set of tools, you know, maybe a tire repair kit or anything like that, that you feel comfortable with doing yourself if needed so uh, if you guys have any other suggestions you know feel free to drop them in a comment section down below so hopefully that answers the question for you all right hybrid battery maintenance is there a filter in honda hybrid batteries and a simple answer is no which i think is a big mistake then obviously uh over time the these batteries do collect dust coming in from the vehicle i think uh a filter would be a great idea like some of the competitors like toyota and stuff like that uh but honda does not put uh filters in their hybrid battery systems and eventually they do collect dust which could overheat some of the components and stuff uh causing the batteries to fail prematurely now uh, we do not do any of these cleaning services uh, on our own and you shouldn't uh, yourself either because it's a lot of high voltage and could result in death. So uh, do not go around poking around any hybrid stuff. Uh, please do yourself a favor if you're concerned with that and you want it maintained, take it to a place that specializes with hybrid battery stuff um, and have them do it. Tell them you want to maintain it. If it's been five, six, seven years, it's probably not a horrible idea to get it done. So maybe you could fabricate some fit filters yourself and put them where the inlets go. Um, you know, that's totally up to you. But anything at the battery, any orange cables, uh, anything wrapped in orange, you know, cables or any uh, orange coverings, do not touch those cables. That's extremely high voltage. And again, it could result in death. So uh, nobody wants to do that because you wanted to save yourself, uh, you know, couple thousand dollars um you'd rather replace a battery at that point than obviously uh not be around anymore so um my opinion is uh, and my advice is stay away from that stuff take it to somebody who uh, does this stuff and when we get this stuff we just swap out the stuff we don't go around taking apart anything uh we'll take apart certain components but other than that uh and we use uh, a lot of equipment we use a uh, you know um leather gloves with rubber gloves. They're all certified and stuff. We have to get them certified every couple months. Uh, so it's dangerous stuff, guys. Stay off of it. Uh, if you're concerned with that, again, take it to a professional. Please do not attempt to do any of this stuff yourself. So 
Hopefully that answers the question for you. All right, so uh, my vehicle is pulling. What could be some of the issues going on? So the obvious one's gonna be tires and tire pressure. Uh, so any of those are out, it could cause a pulling. Um, also, if your alignment is off substantially, could definitely cause a pulling or the sensation of a pulling because your steering wheel is off. So you think you're countering and you're really not. Uh, but uh, obviously those would be the uh, two most uh, extreme examples at this point, or the obvious examples. Um, if you have some worn suspension components, could definitely cause a pulling from the suspension just not being true and giving. Um, also, if you have a sticking brake caliper applying pressure, then it's cause, uh, gonna cause extra drag on that side and cause it to pull to that side. So just other some of the stuff here, the most common ones being you know uh, tires, tire pressure. So uneven tire wear causes a lot of wacky stuff, noise. A lot of people mistake those for bearings when it's actually tires and they're actually just cupped. Um, that causes also some drivability concerns, could cause some pulling, some feathering, um, inner wear, stuff like that. If your car is lowered and you modified your suspension, very possible that uh, you're gonna have some weird driving characteristics or even some uh, pulling or anything like that. So that would be some of the obvious uh, stuff. Um, so if you have any other suggestions out there, uh, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section down below. But uh, that would be some of the stuff I would look forward to. And usually that's gonna be one of your components causing your issue. So hopefully that answers the question for you. All right, last but not least question of the week. And how do I pinpoint uh, water leaks. So I will start at the highest point and uh, take apart anything I need to, to get a good visible shot there. Uh, at that point, I will probably take it into our car wash and uh, run it a couple times. Sometimes it'll be obvious, sometimes it won't be. Sometimes the leaks are only when the car flexes. So you have to keep that in uh, mind. So uh, like I said, sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. I will use a combination of different methods to kind of try to isolate my uh, water leak, uh, take apart some panels, and then also I use spray nine around any seals or any gaps I see and try to blow with the gun, see if anything is traveling there. Sometimes. Uh, I could blow over here and it, the, the air or the bubbles could be coming out six, seven, uh, two, three feet away, you know, six, seven inches away, two, three feet away. So uh, just keep that in mind. Sometimes the air is just traveling and going out at the at that point of uh, the issue. So we've had a lot of um, windshields being uh, defective or deformed or not uh, sealed properly from factory. So that's definitely a thing. Uh, usually when a new car comes out, sometimes, uh, you know, just small imperfections of robots miss some seam sealer or whatever, and it's leaking from those uh, spots. So um, I have used also some uh, smoke, a uh, smoke machine, that sometimes doesn't work too well because the car does have some natural spots where the smoke escapes from. Although if it's something obvious, uh, it could be that, you know, that comes in helpful. Sometimes we just leave a water hose running, we tape it to the top of the vehicle, and if it's not obvious, we'll try to shake it, put it on an angle, whatever the case may be to try to pinpoint, um, you know, those stuff. A lot of common uh, leaks are, again, windshields, uh, some roof drains, uh, eventually they block up and they, they leak at a joint. Um, you know, a, a robot that missed a seam seal, that's usually on a brand new car that we see the issue uh, right away. But just some of the methods I personally use, again, if you have anything out there that you like to use as a technician, or you've seen a technician use, or you've had an issue with the water leak, and um, you know, you've had something happen, make sure you do share in the comment section down below. And like that, we could all get educated and just start a conversation. So with that being said, I'll catch everyone on the next one.